Hello and good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Cars and Kenny. No, <laughs> Cars and Coffee with Kenny. Sorry. <laughs> I had too much, too much coffee this morning. <laughs> anyway, welcome to Cars and Coffee with me, Kenny Brown. And if you're a car guy or gal that really wants to learn more about performance, cool parts, and, and cars in particular, you are in the right place. Because I will spend the next, uh, next hour uh, or so uh, sharing with you some of my extensive knowledge and background from like 40 years of Motors, professional motorsports and, and building great cars. And also, uh, questions. Uh, please send in questions. I'm more than happy to try to answer some of your questions this morning uh, because that, that's what I do. I, I talk about what you want to learn about. And let's see, what do we have lined up for today? Uh, this, this is episode 35. Can you guys believe that? We're up to 35 episodes on this. Just blows my mind. Uh, let's see, we're going to talk about i got some cool tech stuff. You know how I like to snag parts uh, out, of, out, of the, out of the shop when we're, when we're building cars, some cool parts to show you. Well, I, I've got two things to show you today. One is the JRZ single adjustables and also uh, the big uh, Kenny Brown uh, Bear six piston, big brake package. And then, uh, oh, we're going to talk about the, the upcoming five-day Transform Your Driving Experience workshop. Uh, this starts Monday. And uh, we did the first one back in, I think, June or something. And it was really popular, and we had a lot of requests to do it again. So we're uh, going to do another one uh, starting Monday. And I can do that now because we just finished up the, speed, the inaugural class of the Speed Therapy Academy. We just finished up on Thursday and had our little uh, virtual uh, graduation ceremony. So it kind of frees me up for next week to do, do, this, uh, do the, uh, the workshop. And by the way, you have to be in the Speed Therapy Society uh, group. A private group to see this because this is not this is not broadcast to everybody. This is just for our people in the Speed Therapy Society. So it's a closed group. So if, if you want to see get get involved, uh, I'll get somewhere down here. Will tell me how to do that. But I, there should be a click. I think that's on the next page. When I tell you how to get involved. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, we're doing something really cool this week. We are, you know, we we, we keep working on a technology thing which uh, we always struggle with, but uh, we first, you know, we're simulcasting now on Facebook Live and YouTube Live, but ta-da, we are now TriCasting. Uh, we've added uh, the uh, uh, Speed Therapy Society Facebook group. We're also broadcasting their live today, too, so it's, it's a great technological feat. In, uh, in a little bit, you're going to see me try to, uh, uh, try to not screw up as I introduce some more technology marvels. Let's see... Uh, what do we have? Uh, oh, the artwork this week. Okay, this week's artwork is another another one of my uh, Nicholas Watts from my collection. And uh, this is the winning GT uh, Mark IV of Dan Gurney and A.J. Foyt, followed in the chaparral by Phil Hill. And this is actually signed by Dan Gurney and Phil Hill and the artist. It's kind of a, it's kind of a cool work. So if, you, if you've been with us for a while, you know I, I like... Uh, I like Nicholas Watts. I've got a number of his his pieces, and I thought this is a this is a nice big red car. I always, you know, this is this is a great shot. So that's what our artwork is today. And let's get back here. As you can tell, I am my own camera person. And oh, I'm also joined by my toolbox. Yep, I think I'm going to call my toolbox Thule. I mean, it's, it's with me all the time. I I think it deserves a nickname. So Thule is with me. Uh, been with me for over 40 years. And if anybody has been with us for a while, I know that that toolbox has been to every major racetrack in North America, plus into Canada more than once. Uh, let's see, uh, going down my list, my handy day list that carries the fares for me. Uh, uh, <laughs> this part I always forget. So good thing she puts it down here. If you're just joining us, I'm Kenny Brown, and this is Cars and Coffee Live, where I spend an hour or so talking to you about things you want to learn about and also showing some cool parts and some tech stuff, and you know, try to share my extensive background and knowledge. Uh, you know, I've made a lot of mistakes over the years to get where I am today. And if I can, by by, by telling you what I know, if I can help you uh, save you from making a mistake, you know, that, that's a big plus for me. Uh, we've got uh, some. Also, I'm asking. We've got some questions from the Speed Therapy Society. We're going to answer, and, and if and you can you can send questions into the Speed Therapy Society uh, through that to me because I'll talk about things you want to know about. And also send your your, your uh, questions in live right now. So we've got uh, uh, BD Dunwood. Uh, he's a new member. Welcome. 
Uh, and I want you to know thoughts on magnetized suspension. Okay, magnetized suspension is, is kind of interesting. It's uh, it's 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 not traditional like spring and shock. It's actually in the simplest terms, it's made up the the let's just say the shock absorbers uh, inside instead of having hydraulic fluid, they've got sort of a magnetic or a metallic uh, fluid, and through uh, electromagnets, they can make the the fluid thicker or thinner and adjust it like in milliseconds. Uh, so in, in a way, it's pretty cool. For street cars, it, it's a really cool setup uh, because it's always adjusting. And I guess there's, I, have, I haven't used anything, but I've heard there are, there are some uh, like a aftermarket plugins that you can use to, to tune the, uh, the suspension to make it a little more, a little more firmer, uh, a little more sporty, uh, for tr like for track. But that, to me, that, that that's, you know, it's, it's a great suspension, but if you really want to, if you're a serious track person, it has some real limitations. Uh, and the biggest limitation is springs. Now for the, the S550s, uh, as far as aftermarket springs that, you know, like OE replacement, they only go up to like 200 pounds, uh, whether it's the, on, the, on the strut, at, on, at, on a regular strut or on a Magna ride, you know, you locked in maybe 200 and maybe 220 as far as spring rate. And, you know, for track days, that's just not enough. Uh, I'll give you some examples. I'll, I'll work. I'll talk about the S197 cars, which it, it's it's much easier to talk about because it's a simpler package. But in the S197 and I guess also in the 550s, they come with about 100, 134, 150 pound front spring rate. So as you can see, off the shelf stuff going up to 200 or 220 uh, is, is a nice increase. It's a sporty increase, but it really doesn't get you where you want to go because uh, my touring for touring uh, my sport touring package is a 350 pound spring rate. Uh, street performance slash novice to intermediate track is a 400 pound front and for uh, intermediate track guys on uh, still on street tires you know 500 550 and our advanced advanced people on on sticky tires is 650. Uh, also we use uh, like for for street cars uh, like the gt 500s we'll use a 650 just because it's so heavy and we'll be talking about that a little, um, a little later on uh, so you know the magna ride is good uh, there, are, there are, I believe, some aftermarket things you can adjust it, but as far as real performance, you're kind of stuck at about a 200-pound spring rate. And uh, you know, like I say, you know, we we like I like big springs, and and, and if you and, and if you really uh, think that this the 650 is too much, uh, Marlite Sun Paul's World Challenge uh, Mustang with motorsport shocks, I might point out, uh, we were running like 850 up on Pirelli slips. So you need spring rate to make the cars go. Also, the Here's another thing that, that people really don't realize to, to run sticky tires. If you want to run slicks, you have to increase your spring rate. Absolutely. A lot, a lot of people, they'll think they're going to go faster or they're, they're like their, their boss Mustang uh, by doing nothing more but putting a set of slicks on. And what happens is the slicks are so sticky. You don't have the spring rate. You don't have the suspension. The car is going to want to roll. You're going to chew up tires and, and really not going to be maybe a little bit quicker, but, uh, you would be a lot quicker with without the slicks on with a good suspension and a good spring rate and good shocks. So anyway, that's kind of like on, on the Magna rides. Uh, they're they're great, 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 great street package, uh, but the road limitations if you want to hit the track. Uh, okay, Jim wants to know the best best way to tie down a Mustang. Well, boy, that's that that's kind of a tough question because all the all cars are different. You know, some are lower than others. Uh, I think the do's and don'ts is you you never want to like put a put a strap on like a, a sway bar panner bar anything that would be bending uh, you always want to look for if, if you're hooking under the car there's always like gaps in the k-member hook onto that or you know loop over a control arm but close to close to the uh the k-member uh, that's if you're going under the front now the problem we run into a lot of our cars are low with splitters which means that's impractical now you've got a tow hook you can always use tow hooks and, and you know kind of triangulate the tow hooks, uh, but the other thing that I do because we always use really high quality wheels uh, like uh, Forge Line and, and, and Apex, uh, I actually use the the spokes of the wheels. Uh, we kind of do, do like an axle strap, go around like a couple spokes, and <clears throat> on that way we're coming around the side of you know, the front, uh, so we're not kind of screwing up the splitter. And then you know the back is uh, uh, you, you, know, you have to go on the axle, but you can't you can't be in a spot that that pulls on the the panner bar or sway bar 
of course, our, our S197s don't run with a sway bar because the suspension is so good. But that's the kind of thing you need to hook onto something solid. And, uh, you know, the, probably the best, there, there's, some, there's some tie downs. That actually, there's a thing that goes over the tire, just goes over the top of the tire and ratchets down. And that, that would be good, too, uh, uh, because I know you're not going to screw up any of your body stuff. So there's a number of good ways that, you know, the what not to do is anything that is softer can bend and Carrie is motioning me. I said something wrong or. Oh, well, I do have an announcement though. Oh, well, Carrie has an announcement. Well, I'll let you read it. If she can read my writing. Lynn St. James. Oh, congratulations. Lynn St. James. Uh, she's been inducted to the, the uh, Sebring hall of fame. Oh, that's awesome. That's just this morning. Just this morning. Uh, uh, those, those that don't know, we've had a very long and, uh, really great relationship with Lynn that goes back decades. Uh, even back when we were in, uh, uh, had our, had our uh, shop on Gaston Alley, uh, we had extra office space. So she actually had that in office right next to me in, in our building. Uh, so you know, we've had the uh, work with her on her, her female driving uh, development program. And uh, she's just, uh, man, she's an amazing woman. I got to tell you that. So uh, congratulations, Lynn. Woohoo! Uh, I'm sure she's going to be inducted in a lot more halls of fame, but she's just, I mean, she is absolutely top, top. She's not only a great driver, she's a great person and a super personality. Uh, okay. So we got the do's and don'ts. That's on page two. And my notes with highlights from Carrie, because you know. Uh, oh, here we go. It's all, I always forget this too. Give me some thumbs up. Uh, it, that always helps spread the word. Uh, thumbs up and some love and all that. Uh, and also, you know, uh, if you've got friends you think that can benefit from what I talk about, please share. Uh, we also have some people that set up like, uh, was it watch groups, I think they're called, where we get a bunch of people together and watch, which, you know, I'm all over that. I mean, that, that's great. You can actually do it right now. You can actually do it right now, I'm told. I have it. People know that I'm, 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 my technology is has to do with cars. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so thumbs up, love. Uh, let's see. We're going to talk about, uh, okay, well, we might as well send your, your questions in. And I think we're going to, uh, we actually have a, I wanted to show you uh, the ZRZ single adjustable coils, coilovers again. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, they're already on a car. Uh, and I wanted to show you the uh, our big, the big, big brake package that we run, the Kenny Brown Bear big brake package uh, that we run. But that's also on a car. So we're going to work with our, okay, got, I hope I get this right, this technology thing. We have a special guest to talk about, you know how I like to bring in special guests, we have a special guest to talk about both the, uh, the shocks and the uh, brakes. So let's see if I can make this happen. Hey, hello everybody. Kenny Brown here, and I've got something kind of cool to show you. Every time we have something in the shop that's interesting, I try to, try to grab, steal some parts from the mechanics when you're not looking, so I can, I can show you some cool stuff and then put it back before they know it's gone. But tonight, I want to talk a little bit about our GRZ shots. The GRZ shots are our premium shot package that we use for pretty much all of our track day cars. And they come in, they're actually, actually custom built for me in the Netherlands. Uh, it's my specifications, and they're shipped here, you know, on a plane. And uh, when they get here, I, I, we assemble them. I select the spring specifically for each individual customer for their application. And when you get them, they're assembled. There's an initial adjustment on there. You've got a shock setup sheet, and it kind of tells you what, how, how, the shocks are, what, how I set them up at. And then there's also kind of a mini tuning guide at the bottom. So you can just you know, make some basic adjustments, although I, I recommend people don't make big adjustments. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, everything in, in moderation, especially in shock adjustments. It's just the shocks. But uh, let, me, let me get right to it and, and show you what these are, because these are, these are main line shock. And jerseys actually come in single adjustable, double adjustable, and also the uh, RS Pros, which are double adjustable with remote canister. Now, for 90% of our clients, the single adjustable is more than adequate. Uh, it seems like the more things people have to adjust, the more opportunity they have to adjust themselves into the fence, which I've seen more than once. And for you know, for 90% of our people, the single adjustables are just fine. 
it, especially if you've never worked with adjustable shocks before, it's better if you focus on just one adjustment, not two, because if you do the math, uh, you know, between uh, uh, a bump adjustment, rebound adjustment, four corners of the car, there's, you know, thousands of different combinations. And the least thing you want to do is find yourself in the weeds. So anyway, this, this is the rear and this is our single adjustable. And uh, people ask about the little spring, the little spring down here, the helper spring. The reason for that is I use some fairly high spring rates. And if you've been paying attention to some of my cars with coffee, uh, you know what I'm talking about. But when you have a high spring rate and you uh, put the car down, if, if this were set up at, at ride height, then when the car got let down, this would kind of flop around. So what we do is we use these little helper springs just to kind of keep everything in place. So when the weight is off and the shocks hang down, everything stays in place and they go back on. Now these, like I said, are single adjustable, and you can see there's a little, you see that? Oh, that's no good there. There's a plus and a minus. Minus is soft and plus is hard or firm, and we adjust everything off of full soft. I start at full soft and work, work our way up. Never want to start at hard and work your way down. And yeah, that, that's just kind of like the worst thing to do because you want, you want the shocks to be just, just firm enough for compliance but not so firm that they don't move enough and they kind of jump across the, the, uh, the bumps. Now, single adjustable only controls a rebound. Now, what is rebound? Okay, rebound is when your spring compresses, okay? If you squash a spring, what's gonna happen as soon as you stop squashing, it's gonna bong, it's gonna you know, spring back up. And you've probably seen old cars going down the road with kind of like bouncing along when they have no shocks left. So what the rebound is, it, it's just pretty much that, it, it controls rebound it controls how quickly or slowly that spring unwinds from being squished, okay? And what you wanna do, if you wanna we wanna control that, that unwinding, like in the front, you're going around a corner, you wanna control how fast that comes up because you wanna have, you wanna have the front of the nose planted. On the back, you wanna control how fast it comes up uh, so you have, still have weight on the rear tire so you have grip. So that's, that's what <coughs> single adjustable is about. A bump adjustment is just that, it's just compression. And you know, 90% of the shock tuning we do on Mustangs is, is with rebound. So you know that the compression just doesn't really play into this. Although, however, even though this is single adjustable, uh, with every click there is a small increase in bump adjust, uh, but the major increases in, in, in rebound. So this is the rear, and you can see this. This is a pretty sweet package. Uh, these are super high premium, uh, top quality uh, shocks. And then moving on to the front of the car. Usually I start the front and work backwards. Today it seemed to work from the backwards forwards. But this is this is a front strut. And again, we've got our, our helper spring down here to take up the slack. And I don't know if you can see this, but below the there you got a little, a little silver thing down there. That's a torsion release bearing. We always put torsion release bearings on all of our coilover shocks. Uh, two things. One, it makes it easier to, to adjust ride height because you've got this basically two thin washer and roller bearings all the way around. So it makes adjusting really easy. But also, as a spring compresses, you know, it goes up and down, it actually kind of twitch a little bit. And by having this little torsion release bearing, it just does that. It releases the torsion uh, that it goes into it. So the spring operates more smoothly. But back a long time ago, when we didn't, uh, before, you know, we were just making, sort of making our coilovers up, this is like 20 some years ago, when we really didn't have a selection we have today. We would like turn like Coney's or Bill Snipes into coilers with a kit. And uh, torsion release bearings really weren't that prominent back then. And what we would see happen is actually we'd see the, the springs actually wearing on the threads on the coilover because they weren't, there wasn't any give to them and they were kind of like doing some funky things. So again, we've got the you know, adjustment on the top, negative and plus. And like I say, when it comes to you, I'll make a, I'll make a preliminary adjustment based on your spring rate and application and then the little tuning guide. But then there's also big letters, you know, call me. Uh, before I make any major adjustments on your shocks, call me and I'll kind of talk you through it. So this is the front strut. And of course we always, all of our struts come with, you can pre-assemble just like this, camber plates on and adjustment. So, and the thing about jerseys is actually, I don't know if you can see that. It's actually got a little bit of camber built right into the strut, which means you don't have to run as much camber on the top, which is a good thing. So that's that's a little bit of <coughs> our jerseys. And I wanted to show them to you because I, I love them. I mean, they're a great shock. I, mean, I, I got exposed to jerseys 
from 2011, from my late son Paul won the uh, Ferrari World Challenge GTS Championship. He didn't win; he just kind of dominated. And you know, one of the keys keys, or there's, there's two keys that I, I carried forward. One is the of we talked about before, my uh, Pro 4R uh, race brakes. I mean, that was part of his package. We've we've since developed them into a much much better package, which we offer for SN95 197 as far as for pure racing. Nothing better. Uh, you may have seen uh, one of the clips on that, but also the JRZs. And I was really impressed because you know, Paul had incredible car control. But one of the things he was really, really good at is making the curbs work for himself. At curbs, you know, curbing, you know, you see like the, the pros driving on curbs all the time and, you know, they kind of fly across. Well, you've got to have a good shock package to use the curbs. If you don't have a good shock package, the curbs can actually upset the car. Or, or, or give you a little a little sway or something, and that just kind of kills time. But if you've got a good shock package, you can actually use the curbs. And that was what's really impressed me. But Paul had obviously the motorsport shocks, and uh, you know they they're a little pricey uh, for our day, track day guys. You know, like 10, 10 grand for a set of shocks plus springs. Uh, so uh, we talked to JRZ, and they've actually since then come out with an RS line, which is sort of like for the track day guy and club racer. And it, it, it's just a wonderful shock package. I mean, we use them on, boy, just about everything. We've got a S197s and the S550s. And uh, uh, like I say, if, if you want like, kind of like the best track day shock without spending 10 grand for a motorsport shock, JRZs are the ones to have. I mean, if they work, I wouldn't use them on the cars I built. So uh, yeah, if you want to talk more about the, the shocks uh, and spring race, oh, I didn't mention spring race. My spring rates are so much higher than everybody else, but then I know how to make springs work and shocks work and springs and shocks have to work together. Uh, but these, these, this is a track setup. So we're only running about a 650 front and 400 rear, which is typical for a live axle car. Uh, the S197s from the factory come with like, man, 134 front, maybe 150 somewhere in there, depending on the car. Uh, and off the shelf aftermarket sport quote sports springs typically only get you 200, maybe 220, and that's about it. And my my touring package starts at 350. Uh, performance streets like 400, and that performance street 400 also really good for for a novice uh, uh, track day people, even all the way up to uh, intermediate. But for the guys that are kind of more advanced and intermediate but still running street tires, I might run like a 500, 550. But for our advanced track day guys, uh, we're on a 650, 400. But this is actually not a track car, but it's a GT500. And you know the front of a GT500 weighs a lot. So I use actually use a, a much higher rate spring. If this was a street car, uh, we'd probably be looking at 500, 550 if it was, if it was a Coyote car. But with the, with the GT500 and the extra nose weight, then I, I chose to use a 650 on this car. And uh, it should just drive like a dream. We've used that package before on the street for... Uh, for, for uh, GT500s and it works, but we had you know, a number of years ago, we had somebody bring a uh, Shelby, what's the, the Super Snake. It was the S197 Super Snake. He spent like a lot of money on this thing and he just hated the way it drove. So he brought it to us, you know, we did our full suspension, you know, the Gen 4 AGS 4.0 suspension and said Jersey, single adjustable with the 650 400s. And it wasn't half an hour, 45 minutes later, he called and he said, you know, this car's never driven this good. I should have brought it to you guys first. Well, good for us. But anyway, that's just how good of a package this are, whether it's street or track. Uh, if you want a super high quality, a premium a shock package, JRZ is it. I mean, if they weren't, I wouldn't use them in the cars that I build. So if you have any questions, uh, certainly, you know, you know the drill. You can get a hold of uh, Carrie or send an email and kind of sign up for one of my 15 minute consults that I, I, I I try to do uh, a number of them a week uh, just to kind of connect with people and give them like good information. And if you want to talk more about shocks and springs, uh, I'd be happy to do that. Just like I say, uh, I'll call in, set one of my, my complimentary 15 minute consults and you know, we'll kind of chat about it. So in the meantime, uh, I got to get these back on the, on the bench before they figure out they're gone or I'm going to be in big trouble. So that's it. That's on shocks for tonight. Yeah. Okay, I made that work. That was our special guest talking about the jerseys. Uh, and uh, actually, I think, uh, uh, are those Steve shocks? Yeah, Steve Foley. 
Okay, uh, Steve, if you're watching, is actually your shocks. Uh, he has a GT500 in the shop that we're we're uh, we're kind of doing a full suspension on, and the brakes. Actually, the, the the brake clip I got coming up too is is the brakes we're putting on on Steve's car. It's kind of our standard big brake package for S197s. Uh, and uh, let's see. Actually, they're already on the car. I, yeah, I can't show them to you because they're already on the car. Uh, so let me see. Let me try my my technology uh, adaptation again, and uh, that one went pretty smooth. I hope I can do it a second time. And what is this on? This is on the the Kenny Brown Bear big brake package for Mustangs. Well, everybody, I'm Kenny Brown, and I'd like to talk to you a little bit about some brake tech. Okay. As far as brake tech, uh, you, you've seen a number of times I've shown the, the Pro 4R race brakes we've developed with Bear, and they're just absolutely awesome brake package, but they are specifically race brakes. Uh, they use race pads, race rotors. I mean, they are a race setup, a little impractical for the street. However, for our street cars, we also have a really cool uh, big brake kit. And I'm fortunate is we just happen to have a GT500 in the shop right now. We're doing the full suspension of brakes on, so if nobody's looking, I kind of stole the brakes so I can show you to you for a little bit, uh, but then I'm going to put them back so they don't even know they were gone. So when I look at big brake kits, what I want, I want, I want something that's really solid, uh, that works, uh, that's, that's cost effective and looks good. So along those lines for all the big brake, big brake, here I go again, I keep doing that. All the big brake kits. Okay, so that turned fast. All the big brake kits that I use are for, for uh, S197s and, uh, and, and also S550s and SN95s are pretty much the same. Uh, the same calipers, uh, the rotor size might be a little bit different, but let me start off with showing you the front. This is, the, this is our Extreme Plus six piston caliper and it's forged. And you can see this is pretty heavy duty. It's got really nice thick uh, 0.71 thick brake pads. Uh, really nice machined bracket that goes on it. And what you can't see is kind of hidden in here are ARP studs along with 12 point uh, high strike nuts, which you know, 12 points gonna give you better torque value. And that's kind of like, that's kind of a working in. I mean, that's the, that's the six, but this is a really great setup. And to go with that, at least for the S197, we have a 14 inch by 1.25 rotor and two piece slotted. I don't use slotted. Remember that if you use a rotor and go on track, it's going to crack into drill holes, period. So I only use slotted. In fact, for Bear, we have our spe specific uh, part numbers just with Bear because of the way I like my rotors done. So that's kind of like, that's kind of like the working in the front. I always like to talk about the front first because that gets the corner first. And also to go with those, we have stainless steel brake lines. And with this, they are the banjo type fitting, which is exactly what we use in professional grade race cars. So they work great. In fact, these, these have just a real light uh, clear coat over the, the stainless steel. It makes it a little more durable. That's kind of a front end of the car. And for the back, uh, for the back, if you've heard me before, I talked that with, with 8.8 .8 differential with the C-lock axles, you, it's really difficult to put a big brake kit on the back. Simply because the big brake kit will be solid mount of the axle, the rotor solid mount of the axle. So the alt rotor is also solid mount. And what happens is with a C clip, there's a little bit of play in and out on the axles. If you've ever taken the back end apart, you've seen a little bit of play. It can be a little bit or even a little bit more. The problem with that is if you go around the corner and the axle moves and you go around the corner the other way, the axle moves again, even a little teeny bit, it's going to knock the pads back. It's called pad knockback. So next time you go to hit the brakes, your foot goes all the way to the floor. And then you're just pumping like crazy to kind of get brakes before you hit the wall. So that's why we don't put big brake kits on the back unless we do things like change over to like a welded in and a, a, a four nine inch type axle, which the uh, bearings on, on the axle that bolts in so it's solid. Uh, or we actually have, uh, we do like nine inch rear ends. We have specially built nine inch rear ends for S197. And, and 550s and Fox, we get them for all of them. So what we do, we want to increase the braking power of the back, but you know, putting the brake, big brake, big, big brake kit on 
is, is, is not a good choice. Uh, so what we do, we've got a really great solution. Okay, and I just happened to use a rag because this is a crusty, dusty rotor that just came off of the back of the GT500. And, uh, you know, this is like an aftermarket rotor. It's got slots and holes. And like I say, you've heard me before, I never, ever use holes, always slots. Because these things get hot, absolutely guaranteed, 100% every single time they're going to crack right at the holes. And that's a bad thing. So, so a wimpy little rear rotor, this is what we put on instead. What do you think? It's a 14 inch rotor and it's the exact same width. It's a ventilated, the exact same width as the factory rotor, but it's two piece, which means it's got aluminum center. And they, with the bigger diameter, it's like using a breaker bar. You know, if you go break a nut loose and you get your little three eighths ratchet and it's, can you get it done? You put a breaker bar on there, it's easier. Well, the same thing happens with brakes. You put more rotor on the back, it's more leverage, uh, more leverage and braking, more braking power. A totally transparent ABS. Some, something we found in testing, it's a long time ago, I might have my numbers off a little bit, but with a stock rotor, we we're seeing something like, I'm going to say just 500 degree rotor temperatures in the back. And when we went to the, you know, this is with our uh, uh, GT4, AGS 4.0 suspension with good anti-squat, good anti-dive. Uh, when we went to the 11 inch rotor, the, the, the rotor temperature jumped up like in the 800 degree range. And then when I went to the full, this is a modified axle, went to the full uh, uh, six piston, uh, big brake kit in the back, uh, that went all the way to 1100 degrees. So the moral of the story is kind of the more brake you put on the back of Mustang, the more it uses it. You know, for, for years, people say, well, you, no, no, no bother putting uh, bigger brakes in the back of Mustang. They don't use it. All the braking's at the front, the back of the air, the back of the car is always up in the air. Uh, well, with a rear grip kit, it's not always up in the air, it stays down. But what I'm saying is you can, you can dramatically improve your braking, uh, stopping distance, stopping power by a big brake kit in the front and a big, big rotor kit on the back. Now, on for the for SN95s, we have, we have this brake available for SN95s, but we, we might do We have some for a 13-inch rotor for smaller wheels, but I prefer the 14-inch rotor. Uh, and I, I like to see at least 18-inch wheels, but I think they will fit on the 14 or 19 inch wheel, I think we will fit 18s. But we also, just to be sure, anytime you get a big brake kit, very important that you understand, will your wheels clear big brakes? Now for our, our kits, we can send you a template that you can kind of print, put on a piece of cardboard. I'm gonna have one over here, hold on, I'll be right back. Here you go, there's a brake template. This is for our Pro 4Rs. And there, you can see it. Uh, it, 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 it prints off in kind of like real in, uh, in, in the actual size. And I put just a piece of, of cardboard and you can lay that on your wheel. Let's go this way. You don't see the ugly back. You lay it on, let's see. On, lighting, help me out here. This is getting bad. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll try that. Okay, you just put it on your wheel in here and this will give you the, the profile of the brake. So as you can see, if this hits, any of the spokes on your brake that's not on your wheel, uh, the brake kits aren't going to clear. If there's room, uh, then the brakes are going to clear. All, all the wheels that we use and carry clear big brakes. So, and then on the, for the S550 cars, we have same caliper, 15 inch rotor on the front, uh, which you know, even better. But we also, because it's an IRS car, we also have a big brake kit for the back. It's also a 15 inch rotor, six piston caliper. That's pretty cool, and we the, the brakes that we, we do have a, kind of like a secret brake package we use for the 550 cars. Uh, it's like super mama, mono, monster, gigantic brakes. Uh, it's actually, you know, the rotors are 15 inch, and the calipers themselves are like 14 and three quarters inches, and they're massive. Uh, but that's only for the 550 cars, and only for the front. And we just put them on our, on our special builds, uh, like, like the, uh, like the GT4 CSR cars, uh, like Maryland, for example, that we built uh, a year or two back. Uh, but that's, that's kind of where we are with, with the big brake kits that I use. And the reason I use them is because they work. Uh, they work. They work. They're good quality and they work. So that's a little, uh, little on the brake check on the, on the car, on the cars, on the brakes I use on my cars. So there. And this, I uh, better get these. Uh, uh, back on the bench before the guys figure out that I stole them. So with that, we'll see you next time.
Yeah. yeah. Ah, <clears throat> well, I did that. Uh, that's, that's, <laughs> I have no idea how, how pleased with myself I am that I got through that without a mistake. Uh, those have been with us for a long time, and, and even like in the, the Speed Therapy Academy, uh, uh, understand what I say when my my technology base has to do with cars, because uh, we we suffered through some technical things, but we sorted them out. And uh, if, uh, if we have any of our Speed Therapy Academy guys with us today, I want to congratulate you on your graduation and uh, putting up with, with me for, uh, for uh, 14 weeks, I guess. Uh, it, it was pretty good. I think everybody, uh, everybody enjoyed it. We had some fantastic uh, special guests in our master class. In fact, we finished up our last master class this past Wednesday was with uh, an engineer friend of mine I've known for years and years, Buddy Faye. Uh, talking a little bit about uh, uh, data acquisition, and uh, I, you know, so you said, say some people while well, they wrote the book on it. Well, this guy actually didn't write the book on it. He wrote a book uh, called uh, Data Power a while back. But uh, and he's he's engineered just about every every if it, if it rolls in the road race car, he's engineered won a bunch of championships. Anyway, that's how we finished off, and then we had our we saw some videos from some of our guys this week, uh, did some critique, and then we had. Uh, and, and driving, uh, driving tips. And then we also had, they had uh, quiz, quiz questions to answer. Each, 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 each quiz was specifically, specifically uh, sort of designed around the indiv individual guy. And it was, uh, mo most of them got it right. Uh, almost everybody got it a little bit right. And some of them got really right. So uh, it, it was good. It, it, was, it was a good thing. Uh, I think everybody enjoyed it. But Anyway, uh, congratulations, you guys, if you're out there. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, the 14 weeks with you. And I think uh, from what I put you feedback is uh, you enjoyed it and learned a lot, too. So let's move along to, uh, I guess that puts me down to talking about the five-day workshop. Uh, and it starts on Monday. And like I say, I can do this now because we finished up with, with the inaugural class of the Academy. And uh, it's transforming your driving experience. I mean, it's I can't get everything in that I know, but I try to get as much in as I can to share with you. And, uh, you know, going day by day, uh, for example, like first days, the first crucial steps. And then we'll talk about building the performance platform, day two, day three, building uh, performance platform, part two, uh, dialing in the car uh, for your maximum driving experience and tips and tips and tricks for driving and car preparation, uh, kind of wrap up the week. And Carrie is coming up with a sign. No, she's not coming up with a sign, not yet. Just she's preparing to come up with a sign. So uh, you can register. It's on there. It's on here. Oh, here it is. I, okay, I got it now. Remember I told you in the beginning that it was down here somewhere? Okay, you can register on the KennyBrown.com website. And remember, this is this is a closed deal. This is not open to the public, the, the workshop. It's a closed deal. It's in the Speed Therapy Society private group. Uh, so, you, so you can you can uh, you can register on the Kindergarten website in the Speed Therapy Society Facebook group uh, through the link posted here <laughs> uh, on, on the Kenny Brown Performance Facebook page. Or if if uh, you're not a Facebook person, call us and we will make arrangements uh, so you can participate at, at some level. So now she comes up with the sign. Okay, so. Are you going to read it? Or you want that, me that's to... a lot to read. <laughs> okay, let you're, you're going to have to read it. Okay, so um, one of the things, at, once you register, uh, you need to join the Speed Therapy uh, Society Facebook page, which Kenny said. Um, but what we have in there uh, to help you through the workshop is... Oh, this, this is a new and improvement over the first yeah. workshop. This, this is really important because this is going to help you through the workshop. It's a five-day workshop, and everybody has their own Kenny Brown Workshop Ambassador. Uh, Amy and Bridget are the ambassadors for this workshop. And they're trying to reach you through Facebook Messenger. So if you could please check out your Facebook Messenger uh, page. It's, there's usually a little red button up in the left-hand corner um, that you can see that you have a message for somebody. Just uh, open that up, and they will uh, converse with you. And they are going to share. Uh, if you can't make the live workshop, they'll share the replay. If, if Kenny offers any kind of learning resources, they'll be able to give you a link to that. It's just a more convenient way for you to make it through the workshop if you have any questions, uh, especially uh, there's a lot of questions usually right when the workshop is happening. You can just uh, uh, instant message your, your uh, what were Kenny Brown Workshop Ambassador, and they will be able to help you. 
So Amy and uh, Bridget are standing by the ready to answer any of your questions. Okay, well, see, new. And, I, I can say that this workshop is new and improved. You know, two of the most important phrases in, uh, in, in advertising. So that's kind of, that's, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's going to be kind of good. Like I say, we're, we've, 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 we've got a lot of people signed up so far. I'm really impressed how many people have signed up for yeah, it. Uh, almost 500 lot. signed up so far. And a lot of them are signing up again because they want to work, watch the workshop for the second time. Well, this, is, this, guys, this is a really cool workshop. If you, if you can make it, uh, I'd recommend registering. And then also just realize that we will be having the replays. Uh, they will be posted until in the Speed Therapy Society Facebook group until uh, Tuesday the 24th. So if you can't make every day, um, you'll be able to watch the replay. And it's worth, worth uh, registering. And it's free. I guess that's the other important term. New, improved, and free. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You sound a little salesy there. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, I think you have some questions. Yeah, let me see where we are. I've been chit-chatting too much. So, I need to get back to our questions. Um, one uh, Facebook user says, I need a Mustang. <laughs> Um, let's see any other ones. And right now, if you want to add questions, go ahead. Okay, and let's see. Can I don't have the a camera. lot of questions. So. That's, that's, that's kind of a. Yeah. <laughs> you can tell them. <laughs> yeah, if, if, if there's a wire or a camera, carry it trip or kick it. Okay, we have a question back here. There's not many questions, so make sure you ask your questions now. Um, JL says, and I think he's a new Speed Therapy Society member, and he may be signed up for the uh, workshop. Uh, JL, JL says, uh, might, when you were talking about shocks, might the double adjustable strain shocks be able to be used on the rumble strip successfully? Okay, he's talking about the double adjustable strain. And I'm going to say yes. Although, uh, if it's an S197, an SN95, that's what we have this, our custom-built strain shocks for. I, I recommend people to stay off the alligator teeth, if at all possible, uh, for a couple of things. One, I mean, you've got to get your shock adjustment just right. Uh, if you've got, if you get, if the, the other way we get the, the, the strange is the fronts are double adjustable. That's the only way we can get them. And we'll run very little uh, bump in them uh, and uh, mostly rebound. Uh, but you, you, you need to work with them so that they're, they feel right going across. Uh, but I, I tell people SN95s, they kind of stay off the alligator teeth. They they chew up wheel bearings, especially if you've got sticky tires or big wheels. Uh, you know, if it's a smooth curb, you're okay. But if, if it's got those, those alligator teeth, uh, they will they will work okay. But I really strongly recommend uh, not driving on them. In fact, in, in, the, in the academy, you know, one of our one of our people had a, we're doing a video uh, with, with SN95. He was hitting the, the alligator teeth and I... You know, I said there, yeah, there's I, by to teaching them, showing them a different line, how to get a, get around the corner better, and uh, stay off the alligator teeth. I think when he goes back and, and drives again, he's going to be a lot quicker, uh, eat without even cutting the corners. Okay. Okay. So anyway, we have uh, another question on shocks. Uh, Cliff Glidden, who is one of our Speed Therapy Academy graduates, um, asked questions about his shocks. He's also getting the JRZ shocks on his car. I have, actually, they're on there already. Um, have, how about you? How about when they begin to wear? How do I or where do I get them rebuilt? Okay, that's a good question. Uh, they, they are rebuildable. Uh, JRZ does have a service center here in, in the U.S. It's up in Chicago getting rebuilt, so that's not a problem. I can tell you, they, you know, we've, we've only had uh, just spotty issues with having to have them rebuilt for the most part, like on, on Ruby, my car. They run there for like three years and, you know, with, with no problems. But if there, if there is an issue and need to get rebuilt, there's a, there's a service center just right up in Chicago. We can kind of shoot them off and they rebuild them and send them back. So, uh, yeah, it, it, that's, that's a nice thing about these, these professional level shocks is they are rebuildable. Okay. Okay. Also, Herstopher has a question. He's another Her graduate. Herstopher. Herstopher is a graduate of Speed Therapy Academy and he joins us from Bulgaria. Uh, every night, uh, it's two o'clock in the morning when he's at the academy, but he's with us this morning. Hello, Christopher. 
Okay, he has a question. The S550 15 inch back calipers, how do they work with the master cylinder and how does this affect brake balance? Uh, it's transparent. Uh, it's just totally transparent. Uh, the, 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 the calipers are set up with the right volume uh, so that, it, it, you know, the, the master cylinder works exactly the same. And because it's ABS, advanced ABS, it's totally transparent. Uh, you know, they don't even know they're back there. The only thing that, that can tell you they're back there is the car stocks. They have a lot better. But yeah, no, and any of the better brake packages we have are transparent to ABS. And if they weren't, I wouldn't use them uh, because you, you guys don't need to be fiddling around and trying to figure out brake biasing and just, uh, you know, having the, the, the ABS work. It's just, that's the way I like it. Okay, we have a number of comments. They're not questions from Tribar65, but he's going to get your opinion whether he wants it or not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you ready? I'm going to read a number of his comments. Okay. Um, he has a Boss S, and he has the GRZ Pros on it with the FA3030 piston. That's a low friction, yep. I think. Okay. Um, and his, his, it's valve for 750, uh, 250 springs. So 750 front, 250 in the rear. Okay. Um, See. So what kind of car it is? It's a uh, Boss S. Boss S? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Let me see what else he says. 750 front. Uh-huh. No, it's 750 front, 250 rear. And okay. he says he has a 22 millimeter rear sway bar on the car. Um, and he also has, it's a 12 Boss S. Um, he says, if I drop the rear sway, sway bar, it goes up. He puts 400 pound springs on or goes up to 400. Um and on his rear suspension, he has uh, the Watts link, stock 302S and Watts. Okay. So do you have any opinions or anything, or just, <laughs> or is it a 15 minute? Uh, it, it It's a 15 minute, but I can tell you, first of all, with 750 front, uh, I hope you run like sticky tires, uh, because that's for 750, you need sticky tires. Also, you're way undersprung in the back, way undersprung. Our basic package is a 650 front, 400 rear. Uh, 750, we go up to maybe a 450 in the back. But the other thing is with the, the rear grip kit, uh, the geometry in the rear grip kit, first of all, we throw the rear sway bar away uh, because I use geometry to control the back of the car. So rear, rear sway bar just makes it worse. Secondly, with the, the Watts link, uh, I've, I've talked about this before. Watts link is the, the, the absolute best way to locate for lateral location of an axle. Okay, the problem is wherever that center pin is that the, the bell crank rotates off, that becomes your rear roll center. Rear roll center is the part of the car that the back of the car wants to roll around, and it, it's high. You typically cannot get them down very low just because of the you know how the bell crank works, and then you have to also have to have some, some structure off to the side to hook onto. Uh, back in the uh, uh, late Trans Am days, uh, what we used to do is take a, a Watts link and mount horizontal to the bottom differential. Uh, that was easy because it's an underslung chassis, so it's easy to just go over and tie off to it. But that gave us the, the benefit of a Watts link for actual location and also put the roll center at the bottom of the diff. Well, you know, for, for the track day guys, uh, for club racing guys, I mean, it, it's pretty impact, practical for street guys, pretty impractical you know, to kind of do that sort of thing. Uh, so what we, what we do instead, uh, where the panel bar crosses the center line of the car, that's your roll center. So in our rear grip kit, uh, it's uh, e every single piece of the rear grip kit is engineered to have an improvement on suspension geometry. And, you know, I've talked to that before, but with the panel bar, what we do is we've got a roll center relocation kit, and with the panel actually rolls the panel bar down to the very bottom of the differential. So we take the roll center from being high and move it down to the bottom of the diff, which has a huge impact on the roll rate in the back of the car. Uh, like I say, we, it, it, because it's the geometry between the, the lower roll center of the back and what I do between the upper controller module, the, the axle brackets and lower control arms is we bring the instant center sort of back in the, I won't say exactly, the, the guys that, that took the academy they know exactly because we talked, had spent a couple of days on geometry, but I bring it back into an area in the car that I, you know, I developed over, you know, this is gen four of the suspension. So. So we get the instant center, and the instant center means anti-squat uh, and also anti-lift. So, I mean, that whole package just, I mean, it completely tames the back of the car, and we throw the rear roll bar away. And, you know, watts lengths are great, except, you know, for me, I just can't, you can't get the roll center down where I want it. Uh, so that's that's why we do it the way we do. But I think you're, I think you're seriously undersprung at the back. Uh, 
you know, I just, uh, you know, we run 650 400s and any, and the only people that run 750s, uh, we have them on like super sticky tires, uh, like at least Hoosiers or, or uh, slicks. Uh, but yeah, the, the, the GRZs are, are, are valve. They, the GRZ valving is so good. They cover a massive range of, of spring rates. So I guess you got my opinion. Why do you want to know? <laughs> Yeah, try bar. If, if that's yeah, and if you want, you can have a fifteen minute consult, and we'll, we can talk about it some more. Yeah, and the the uh, fifteen minute consult link is on the Facebook page, and it should be in the comments. Uh, one of the one of our team members will post the fifteen minute link. Okay, let's see. We have a number of questions coming in right now. Okay, JL has another question. He's the one that asked about the um, double adjustable. Uh, shocks, strain shocks. Okay. Okay. When it comes to time for the KB SN 95 SLA system, are the wheel bearings changed for something other than OEMs? Uh, we are all used to ball joints and any other consumable types of parts come common for longe longevity. Yeah, I can tell you, and you know, the, the SLA is at least a year away, maybe, but I can tell you that we'll run different ball, different uh, wheel bearings. Than what's on the than than the, the SN95 wheel bearings because as we know they they're always been a problem, but no it, it'll have some pretty heavy duty wheel bearings so you don't have to worry about but you know, I'm I'm really I I got so many things to do uh, I'm, uh, that the the SLA for 197 and and uh, SN95s is a year or so out uh, but we we have something right now that uh, we just got a patent on we filed for a patent so it's patent pending. In the rear suspension that I'll be introducing in the weeks to come. Uh, not quite ready yet because we want to get into uh, a little further into the. We're doing like a pre-production lot, and the, the the guys in the academy know all about it. In fact, um, uh, most of them already signed up for one. But it, uh, we'll be talking about that coming in the future. But it, it's it is actually it, it's it's it'll blow your mind how the rear I uh, get the rear suspension to work. But like I say, I'm just, I guess I'm just giving, is this a teaser? Yeah, you're not supposed to give teasers. <laughs> We're not supposed to give teasers. Anyway, well, what we'll do is when the Academy guys know know all about it, and uh, I want to get a little bit further in a couple, couple, three weeks maybe, and then what we'll do is we'll do a special segment in the society uh, just to introduce this this new product. And we're not going to introduce it to the public at large for probably to after the first year. So right now the Academy guys know about it. And uh, in the coming weeks, the society, you, you and the society will know about it. So I guess I kind of got off on a tangent. Yeah, you did. Okay, we have what time is it? We've got a few more minutes here. Okay, we have still a number of questions to go. Um, I can find them. So I think this might, I think you answered this with the, a, um, with Herster first, but this uh, S550 15 inch back calipers, how do they work with the master cylinder, how this affects brake balance? Is that kind of a real yeah, that's question? same question. It's, it's totally transparent to the ABS and the master cylinder. Uh, it doesn't even know it's there. And that's because the, 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 the calipers, the piston size is engineered, so it's got the same volume as, as the OE as the OE brakes. Uh, so you know, if you've got the same volume, then the, the master cylinder doesn't know the difference. And uh, even though it's got a 15-inch rotor, uh, the ABS sensors still pick it up, so it's totally transparent. It's a pretty cool package. I mean, it, it, look, it looks awesome. I gotta tell you, big 15 inch brakes uh, front and rear with, with bright, shiny red calipers or silver calipers or black calipers. We can get, I, I forgot to say, we can get the calipers in, they come black, silver, and red, but we have, there's custom colors. Uh, we can get them in a lot of different colors. We've actually had a couple get nickel plating on, on their calipers, which are pretty cool. So, okay, so uh, Cliff Lynn, uh, he doesn't have a question, but it's just so sweet. Again, uh, from our Speed Therapy Academy graduate class, uh, he says it was a Speed Therapy Academy was a great learning experience. I encourage anybody who wants to know more about his car setup, driver driving improvement, and sharing Kenny's knowledge. It's well worth the time and the effort. Huh. He said it made him better. Huh. That's not sweet. Yeah, Thank that's you. really nice. We appreciate the club. He's actually Cliff has a uh, an FR five hundred S. You may be familiar with they hey, were built in eight for not early uh, Mustang challenge in 2009 and 2010. And back then I actually engineered three of the uh, Mustang challenge cars for speed, speed works, speed works, yeah, yeah, speed works racing here in Indianapolis. 
And it was really weird. Cliff ended up with one of the cars, the number 44 car, uh, that you know I hadn't seen in since 2010. And it's 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 like what we're doing is we are make, basically making a whole new car. Uh, it's the uh, sort of like un, un, unscrewing the razor cap, rolling the car out, rolling a new car in, screwing, screwing the razor cap back on. <laughs> He's got full AGS 4.0 suspension, uh, Pro Far R brakes, uh, JRZ shocks, and we're doing uh, the, the engine upgrade that was legal for World Challenge in 2011. So 2010, the Mustang Challenge series finished, and there's all these cars, so they, they allowed them in the World Challenge with some updates. So what he's getting back, he brought a 2010 FR500, the Mustang Challenge spec car. What he's getting back is a 2011 World Challenge spec car. And uh, he's, I'm pretty excited for him to drive it because he's just not going to believe he's just not going to believe how good it works. So th thanks, thanks for the plug, Cliff. Okay, and then. Um See, Tribar has a comment that I think is good for everybody. Uh, Tribar65 is, I don't, I'm sure that's not his name, but his code name. Um, he says that they're for uh, JRZs to be rebuilt. Uh, PSI at Sonoma Raceway can rebuild them as well. Okay. Okay. So there's two, diff two different places. Uh, like we use the one in Chicago because it's close. That's uh, good for West Coast. Yeah. People. And uh, so th now, I, now I know there's one with the West Coast. So, yeah, I mean, they're, they're fabulous shocks. I mean, if you look at the JRZ website, these, these, these are absolutely top, 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 top level professional grade shocks. And they're really big in Europe. Okay. And D.D. Dunwood, he's a new Speed Therapy Society member. And I'm assuming well, he welcome. signed up for the workshop. Um, he says, S550s, are hub-centric wheel spacers good or bad for geometry? Uh, hub-centric waste, it really doesn't change geometry that much. Uh, but you really should be using hub centric. If you're using wheel spacers, hub centric is one to use. Because what that means is the wheel will actually it's the hub on the space that the wheel will center on, so you don't have to rely on the on the lug nuts. Uh, it really doesn't change that much. Uh, I mean, it's minimal, uh, nothing that you would feel. And uh, the thing it does do, if you're if you put spacers on the front, uh, you're widening the track, and widening the track in the front is always a positive, good thing. It always makes the cars handle better. Okay, and then we have uh, two questions from, uh, I'm not sure their name, um, but anyway, it's, it says Facebook user, so but they've been pretty active on our site right now, so let's see, wondering what is the best, for S197, what is the best brake pads to use for street application? What do you recommend? Okay, we've got, we've got a couple different ones. Uh, and if you call in, I, we can talk about it because we've got just a pure street, street autocross. Uh, and we, I think we've got 14 maybe different brake compounds. But we do have a really good one for the street that's easy on rotors. Uh, is there a 550 car? Um, no, this, I think is one, S, S187 because he's asking a 197. Yeah, I mean, we, we've got, we get, we get, we've got to, we kind of switched over to, to uh, for our, our track day guys. And street guys, the, the G locks are still using Hawk for race cars, uh, just because that's, that's what I've been using for years for race cars. But the the, the G locks that we're getting uh, are really friendly on rotors, which is good. And also for the track day guys, we get it pre vetted, so you don't have to you know waste an entire session uh, vetting your brake pads. And people who who know who who uh, run track days know if you don't get your brake pads vetted right, uh, they don't last. Uh, so, but anyway, we get them pre-vetted. So yeah, call us. We, we can get you. We can get you hooked up. Not a problem. Okay. We also can get you set up with two-piece slotted rotors as an upgrade. Okay, I think I figured out who this uh, Facebook user is. Ooh. Um, because it's the same question here. Chris Perigo, uh, since an uh, S197 brakes and clutch use the same fluid, do you recommend spread uh, spreading them? Uh, yeah, actually, yes. I mean, there's kits out there that separate the uh, the master cylinder uh, uh, reservoir for the, the clutch and and the uh, the brakes. Uh, those those who run S197 know that they use the same hydraulic master uh, reservoir, the brake reservoir for the clutch. And if you're on track a lot, that can get hot. You know, we certainly recommend the very least uh, for S197 track guys is put like the 
the flame stuff for spark plug wires, uh, fire guard, whatever they are, put that on, on your, your, your line down to between the master cylinder and the, and the, uh, the, uh, uh, and the, you know what I mean? Uh, because it, it will get hot. And, and by removing it, we're actually, we're doing that on, uh, I think that we're doing on Cliff's car. We're, we're taking, we're putting a remote master, remote uh, reservoir for the, uh, the clutch fluid. So yeah, it, it's, I, I strongly recommend it. Oh. You know, we don't build it or anything, but I know there's kits out there. So I, I like, yeah, I recommend it. So also I would like to uh, thank uh, Chris here ago. He invited a whole bunch of his friends. Oh, so thank you. I, on where I'm looking at it, Chris, it says you're, your name is Facebook user, but I'm on a different platform. So thank you, Chris, for inviting all your friends. Really appreciate it. Okay, and then from my watch party, let's see. See, Mark Bowen would like to know, uh, Mark Bowen, would that big rotor package work on an S on an F150? I already have 15 inch six piston calibers up front. Or an F150? Yeah. Uh, if it's got an 8.8, .8, I think the answer is yes, but I, I really need to check on that because you know, we haven't haven't done that yet. Uh, but certainly, uh, you know, give a call in and uh, we have some. But on our research on that, we have you just don't remember. We have packages for the the F one F one fifty. Oh, okay, I guess I guess we do have packages for the F one fifty. Yeah, I just don't remember. Well, I won't say anymore. You developed yeah, them. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, oh, I did. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, Animus, uh, Anibus uh, Ferro is uh, actually, uh, he has got almost our full front and rear suspension, I think, right now. He's asking a question because uh, he has an S197 GT with 14-inch OEM Bren Brembo brakes. Would there be an issue running 13.8 GT500 rear rotors? Uh, no, but let me tell you this, that the better package is the the 14-inch uh, rotors that I just showed in the clip. Uh, the we got a GT500 here. <clears throat> we're taking the rotors off and putting the 14-inchers on. On a, I can't remember what years. Uh, like there's some years the GT500 that actually maybe it's 13, 14. I, I just don't remember. Uh, Rich would know that if to switch over to the 14-inch rotors, uh, we have to actually put the brackets off of the GT on it. So no, I, I would I would strongly recommend you know the 14 inch upgrade kit over the over the GT 500 rear rotors, a much better package, a much better package. So you put the you know, two piece slotted rotors. I mean, uh, you know that, that's sort of like the bomb. Plus they're 14 inch, and I'm just stalling because Carrie's doing something on her phone and not asking me questions. I'm actually working with three of our team members. Oh, she's working with me. three of our team members right now. So I guess I have to. Delay for more time. Delay for more time. Well, maybe I should just ask Bridget right now, as long as. So anyway, she's she's uh Bridget is did a watch party. Oh, Bridget, good for you. And she has one question. I'm not sure if it's two questions from her watch party. So Bridget, if you can send through the second watch party question, if there's one, I'd appreciate it. Um, and then we have. Um, see our good old Facebook user uh, said love how easy it is to change the paths and we also have someone this this is what their name is someone on Facebook that's that's clever uh, 13 to 14 GT 500 is bigger on rear is what he mentioned is that correct uh, it could be I, I, I just know that we take them off and put the, put our uh, two piece rotors on because we cannot get uh, two-piece slotted rotors for the GT500, uh, you know, to replace the OE ones. So we we go to our, which you know, you know yeah. <clears throat> if you're gonna put rotors on, two-piece slot is what you really need. Uh, it just does so many things better. Okay, there was a number of questions. Say, if anybody has any more questions, or uh, if we miss one of your questions, please just uh, retype it in, and we'll read it. Otherwise, we're gonna be getting ready to sign off. Um, I just wanted to mention one more time, if you signed up for the uh, Transform Your Driving Experience workshop and you've also joined the Speed Therapy Society Facebook page so you can view the workshop, um, Bridget or Amy, our Kenny Brown workshop ambassadors, 
are have messaged you and they're uh, waiting for a reply from you. They'll be able to help you through workshop, get you a whole bunch of resources that you need. So look in your Facebook Messenger up in the left right hand corner for a little red dot and click on that and you'll be able to connect with them. And also also wasn't there some uh, problem with some some of the emails going into people's junk mail? Yes. Yeah. So so uh, what we've learned, especially if you have Microsoft Office or Mic Microsoft 365, they've uh, increased their security. So a lot of people's emails are going into junk or clutter. So if you're thinking you should get an email from Kenny Brown, especially on the workshop, we'll be sending you one every day to remind you um, uh, as a reminder and also the replay. So if you do that, look at make sure you check your junk or your clutter and then click on it so you can accept us as a safe sender. There we go. So, do you have any more questions or are we? Um, I think we are good. Just one more. You know, Monday is the workshop and you can sign up on just about every access point for Kenny Brown. The website, Facebook page, call in, any, any way you want to. Okay. Uh, before we, we close up, what are we doing next Saturday? It's on your notes. I know, but I can't find it. <laughs> oh, here I found it. <laughs> Okay, next Saturday, we're, we're going to talk about, of course, answer your questions and talk about some winterizing for cars. You know, a lot of people will put their car up for the winter. So we'll talk about that. Uh, some questions I'm sure will come in during the week, and, and we'll talk about those too. Uh, but af after next week, I think Thanksgiving is an encore presentation. And then I'm, I'm lobbying for to do a couple of encore presentations in a row coming up. Uh, I mean, it's been 30, 35 weeks for me, uh, Saturday, Cars and Coffee. We just did we did a five-day workshop. We just did a 14-week 14 14 uh, academy. I'm doing another five-day workshop. Okay. So okay. I'm going to take some time. What I'm getting to, if there's certain things you want, you'd like to have, see, see again, uh, s send in what you'd like to see, and, and they'll try to pull up the uh, – uh, the, the episodes that, that feature what you want to talk about on the encore. Will you plug your ears for a moment? So you don't say la la, I have to talk. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what usually happens, Kenny takes one week off and then he's rearing to go. Uh, our team really wants him to do more than uh, <laughs> do every Saturday. Well, so we, we'll see. We, so we stay have a tuned. Issue. We have so a lot of issue. Tuned. So anyway, take care. Okay, that's it for today. I uh, really appreciate everybody showing up. Congratulations again to our Speed Therapy Academy, Speed Therapy Academy graduates. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, an awful lot of you Monday night uh, for the Transform Your Driving Experience Workshop. Uh, thanks for your questions. Uh, you want you want anything we didn't talk about? You want to know about uh, for next week? We'll send your questions in for the academy, and uh, you know we'll sure sure to talk. Society. Okay, I, I told you, 30, 35 weeks of this, okay, I, I, I can use some encores. Send them into the Speed Therapy Society. Society. Okay, well, with that with that note, uh, a tweet came in. Is it important? Nope. nope. Okay, but with that, I'll let you guys go off and enjoy your Saturday. If you can still drive your car, if you have part of the country you can, enjoy it. Uh, it's getting a little frosty here, uh, which I'm not really looking forward to what comes after the frost. So we'll see you next week. <laughs>